Good day students and welcome again to our Health 9 class. In our previous discussion, you have learned the definition of health, community, community health, and environmental health. This time, our lesson is all about community and environmental health problems. Our objectives for this lesson are the following. First, discuss the nature of community and environmental health issues. Second, analyze the effects of environmental issues on people's health. And third, suggest ways to prevent and manage environmental health issues. Let's go first to the community health problems and I am sure that you are already familiar with this. First, human excreta and sewage. Human waste or human excreta refers to the waste products of the human digestive system and the human metabolism, namely urine and feces. Second, we have the disease control. This refers to the diseases spread in the community through contact, droplet, and airborne. Third, peace and order. If the community is unhealthy, the community might experience violence and conflict behaviors. Fourth, waste disposal. Disposing of waste has huge environmental impacts and can cause serious problems. Some waste will eventually rot, but not all, and in the process it may spell it may smell or generate methane gas, which is explosive and contributes to the greenhouse effects. Fifth is the food sanitation. Foodborne illness cases can be attributed to poor sanitation and food hygiene, including poor personal hygiene and contamination of equipment or environments that can cause problems in the community. Sixth is water supply. When waters run dry, people can't get enough to drink, wash, or feed crops and economic decline may occur. Seventh, drug abuse prevention and control in the community. Those who abuse drugs are more likely to engage in risk-taking behaviors at home and even in the community. They have a higher co-occurrence of mental disorders and are more likely to be jailed for crimes committed. Different perennial problems happen to the different regions of the country. They vary according to factors like economy, politics, geography, culture, and social context. There are places which experience community health problems like waterborne and communicable diseases, armed conflicts, natural disasters, highly urbanized zones, and overpopulated areas. Due to this, our government has created an office which would be in charge of planning and implementing rules and regulations to address the above-mentioned community health problems and one of its program is solid waste management program that helps lessen the amount of refuse in our country. Let's take a deeper look at its focus of concern. When we say refuse, these are the dump, food waste, or discarded materials. We have here the kind, composition, and sources of refuse. The first one is garbage. Garbage are waste from pe preparation, cooking and serving of food, market waste, from handling storage and safe of produce. These are from households, restaurants, institutions, stores, and markets. Second one is rubbish. When we say rubbish, these are waste materials such as bottles, broken glass, tin cans, waste papers, discarded porcelain wares, pieces of metal, and other wrapping materials. We have two types of rubbish. We have the combustible and non-combustible. When we say combustible, this refers to any material that will catch on fire and burn, while non-combustible materials refer to construction materials that will not ignite 
burn, or release flammable vapors. The sources are same with garbage. Next one is street refuse, such as sweepings, dirt leaves, catch basin dirt. The sources are streets, sidewalks, alleys, and vacant lots. Next one is dead animal. These are the cats, dogs, horses, and cows that we can see on the street. The next one is the abandoned vehicle, such as unwanted cars and trucks left on public property. The sources are same with street fuse. Next is the industrial waste. These are the food processing waste, boiler house cinders, and lumber scraps. The sources are from factories and power plants. Next one is the demolition waste. These are the lumber, pipes, bricks, masonry, and other construction materials that we can find in demolition sites to be used for new buildings, renewal projects, and expressways. The next one is the construction waste. These are the scrap lumber, pipes, other construction materials that we can find in new construction or remodeling buildings. Another is the special waste. These are hazardous solids and liquids, explosives, or even batteries. These are from household, hotels, hospitals, stores, industry, and even in institutions. The last one is the sewage treatment residue. These are solids from core screening and from grid chambers or septic tanks lodge. The sources are sewage treatment plants and septic tanks. Let's now talk about the environmental problems in the Philippines. These are the pressing problems that we encounter in the Philippines. We have deforestation, flash floods, coral reef degradation, oil spill, soil erosion, illegal mining, and pollution. The first one is deforestation. Deforestation is the destruction of big areas of forest. The Philippines is among the countries with the fastest loss of forests around the world. It ranks actually fourth among the world's top 10 most threatened forest hotspots. Second is the flash flood. It is the sudden flood of great volume usually caused by a heavy rain. The next one is illegal mining. It is the extraction of valuable minerals or other geological materials which form the mineralized package of economic interest to the miner in the absence of land rights, mining license, exploration or mineral transportation permit, or of any document that could legitimate the ongoing operations. Another problem is the soil erosion. This happens when soil and rock are moved from one place to another by wind, water, and gravity. The causes of soil erosion are deforestation, building of roads, agriculture, urbanization, mining, from oil tankers with equipment falls, from nature and human activities on land, from water sports, and from drilling works carried out in the sea. The next one is the coral reef degradation. Coral reef destruction is defined as the degradation and potential mass death of the ocean's corals. The most important causes for coral reef degradation are coastal development and excessive exploitation of its resources. Overfishing and the use of destructive fishing methods have decimated fish populations on reefs and destroyed their habitats as well. Next one is pollution. This is any alteration of the physical, chemical, and biological properties of water, air, or land resources. We have four types of pollution. 
we have the air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, and soil pollution. Let's go now to the effects of the environmental problems that we have mentioned earlier. We have the deforestation. The effects are soil erosion, landslides, greenhouse effect, denuded upland, silting of rivers and dams, degraded watershed, flooding, and destruction of corals along the coast. Let's go now to the effects of flash flood. We have the causes of disease such as cholera and other waterborne diseases, contamination of drinking water, destruction of sewage system, destruction of dams and destruction of leaves, and now destruction of houses. Soil erosion. The effects are unproductive use of farmland, difficulty in raising of livestock, silting of artificial lakes, and loss of soil and vegetation which causes climate changes. We also have the oil spill as one of our environmental problems and the effects are suffocation of marine mammals and death of trees from oil in roots. We have the coral reef degradation and its effects are the loss of edible reef fish, reduction of species diversity and richness, alteration in the site structure or target species. And lastly, we have the illegal mining. Its effects are water poisoning of all the living things, destruction of beautiful coral reefs, and bareness of land. And that ends our lesson in Health 9. I hope that you are one of the people who are protecting and saving our environment to avoid our future problems in our environment. Thank you and have a good day.